Ludlow Measurements has been manufacturing quality radiation detection equipment since 1962. Our objective is to provide a quality product that meets the needs of the user in a package that will withstand rugged use and harsh environments. Ludlow Measurements can be found on the web at www.ludlums.com. Our toll-free telephone number is 1-800-622-0828. The purpose of this video is to familiarize the user with the many types of radiation detectors or probes. Radiation detectors or probes can be divided into four types. They are Geiger-Muller, scintillator, gas proportional, and ion chambers. Each type has specific applications or cost and performance make it the logical choice. Geiger-Muller detectors are commonly referred to as GM detectors. GM detectors are a simple and reliable detector of alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. For the purposes of this video, we will consider X-ray radiation to be equal to gamma radiation. GM tubes operate at set voltages, with the most common being 900 volts DC. A GM tube consists of a metal housing with an electrode wire or grid inside. The tube is normally filled with an inert gas, such as neon, plus some type of halogen quench gas. The purpose of the quench gas is to stop the discharge. Without it, the tube would more easily go into plasma discharge, much like a fluorescent tube. When ionizing radiation enters the tube, it reacts with the gas and releases electrons, which cause a flow of current in the electrode. This current flow can be detected as a pulse and counted by the measuring instrument. The number of pulses can be related to the strength of the radioactive field. Some of the tubes have a thin window, like the pancake detector in the Model 44-9. Tubes with the thin window can detect alpha radiation as well as gamma and high-energy beta radiation. Thin wall tubes without a window can detect only gamma radiation. Some of these tubes are enclosed in a metal housing with a rotating window. Opening the window will allow gamma or high-energy beta radiation to pass through to the tube and be detected. Closing the window will stop the beta radiation and only allow gamma radiation to pass to the tube. This type of detector is commonly referred to as the hot dog. Some smaller versions of the GM detector operate at 550 volts. These tubes are generally intended for high exposure rate measurements. Ludlow Measurements normally calibrates GM detectors with a cesium-137 gamma source. Some types of GM tubes are energy compensated. These tubes have special enclosures that act as attenuators to specific energies. This tends to give the tube a flatter energy response. The comparison can be seen in these two charts. GM detectors are good general-purpose radiation detectors. They are rugged and generally less expensive than other types of probes. Pancakes especially are popular for general-purpose survey applications since they can detect alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. One concern with all detectors, but especially the Geiger-Muller type, is dead time. Dead time is the time it takes for the tube to recover from the internal discharge created by the incident radiation. During this time, usually around 80 or more microseconds, the tube cannot respond to more radiation. As you increase the field, the efficiency of the detector begins to roll off or become nonlinear. Some instruments, especially the microprocessor-based ones, have dead time compensation, or DTC. This compensation algorithm can be adjusted to add a correction factor to the counts displayed. This, in effect, extends the useful range of the tube. A second type of radiation detector is the scintillator detector. Depending on the scintillation material, a scintillation type detector can be used for alpha, beta, and or gamma radiation detection. A gamma scintillator detector is the best at sensitivity when checking for gamma radiation. They are used for micro Rankine radiation levels near background or for examining low-level samples such as the cotton swipes used for leak testing of sealed sources or checking oil field pipes for naturally occurring radioactive material. The scintillator probe consists of a type of material which scintillates or gives off light when exposed to radiation. This scintillator can be inorganic, such as a crystal, or organic, such as plastic. The most popular crystal detector is the sodium iodide detector. 
Some inorganic scintillators use a thin film containing powder, such as zinc sulfide. These are used to detect alpha radiation. Plastic scintillators are used for beta detection. Some detectors use a combination of scintillators to detect more than one type of radiation. The second component of the scintillator is the photodetector. These are either a vacuum tube photomultiplier or a solid state photodiode. Currently, Ludlow Measurements uses only the PMT type photodetector. Photodiode detectors are generally much more expensive and are used in laboratory type applications. PMT scintillator probes require that a plateau procedure be performed to determine the proper operating voltage. In doing a plateau, a radioactive source is used. For many scintillators, the most popular source is americium-241. The detector is connected to a counting device, such as the LMI Model 2200 scalar. For a sodium iodide detector, the source is placed on or near the detector, and the high voltage is typically increased in 50-volt steps, starting at around 400 volts. A six-second count is taken for each step. At some point, there will be an exponential change in the number of counts observed. This will continue normally for a few steps and then level off, or almost level off. Sometimes there is a slight increase and then a leveling off, or even a slight decrease in counts. This is called the knee of the plateau. Moving on into the plateau, another rather dramatic increase will occur. This is commonly known as the tail region, or the self-excitation region. The plateau is the voltage range past the knee, but less than the voltage where the tail begins. The operating voltage should be in the plateau range, typically one step above the knee. Scintillator probes should be plateaued as a normal part of calibration. This procedure is appropriate for survey-type scintillator probes, such as the Ludlum Model 44-2 or 44-10 gamma simulators. On other types of scintillator probes, the plateau may be determined by looking for a specific efficiency with a calibrated source. Refer to the manual of your specific probe for these instructions. The output voltage on scintillation type detectors is proportional to the energy deposited by the radiation. This means that you can tell the energy of the incoming radiation by the pulse height and thus be able to tell what type of radioactive material produced the radiation. Some scintillators, such as sodium iodide, are better suited for this application. Another type of detector has a sandwich of plastic scintillator and a thin film of zinc sulfide covered with a thin metallized Mylar window. They will detect alpha and beta radiation, giving pulses of different amplitudes for each type of radiation. A good example of this type of detector is the 43-10-1 alpha beta sample counter, which will give an output pulse of around 7 to 40 millivolts for beta radiation and over 120 millivolts for alpha radiation. Thin window scintillator detectors should be checked for light leaks. Any pinhole in the metallized film will flood the scintillator with light and render it useless until the window is replaced or the hole covered. Plastic scintillator detectors are somewhat less sensitive than crystal detectors. They have the advantage of being impervious to moisture and can be made into very large sizes. Sodium iodide crystals are hygroscopic. That means they must be sealed or they'll absorb moisture from the air, turn yellow, and be ruined. One interesting note is that when some scintillation detectors are wrapped in a light tight container, they must be allowed to sit and settle out because the scintillator has an afterglow that slowly diminishes over time. The afterglow causes artificially high background readings. They typically need to sit for 8 to 12 hours to settle out. The next category of detectors is the gas proportional. They are used to detect alpha and beta radiation. These detectors have little gamma sensitivity because of the low density of the gas. Gas proportional detectors are used in a variety of applications, such as hand survey, and larger ones are even used for floor inspection. They consist of an aluminum housing containing fine platinum wires. There is a cavity surrounding these wires with fittings for the gas connections. The cavity is covered by a thin mylar window. 
The gas used in these detectors is usually P10, which is 90% argon and 10% methane. These detectors operate at high voltages, generally 1100 to 1800 volts. They are normally operated at the lower end of the range from 1100 to 1400 volts for alpha detection and 1500 to 1800 volts for beta gamma radiation. One important consideration with the gas probes is to be sure that they are properly purged. The gas should be regulated to no more than 5 psi. The gas should be attached to the lower connector with the other connector left open. Because the P-tin is heavier than air, the gas can fill from the bottom just like a liquid to force any air pockets out of the detector. Gas proportional detectors are normally run dynamically with a continuous flow of gas. They can be used statically or disconnected from the gas flow for a period of several hours. Consult the manual for your detector for flow rate and static runtime. The last types of detectors are ion chambers. Ion chambers detect and measure ionizing radiation by measuring the electric current that flows when radiation ionizes gas in the chamber, making the gas a conductor of energy. An advantage of ion chambers is that they have a very flat energy response. This means they can accurately measure dose rates from a gamma source over a wide range of energies. Many ion chambers have a beta shield that can be opened and allow beta particles to enter the chamber and be detected. A beta correction factor can be applied to determine the beta dose rate. Vented ion chambers such as the Ludlum Model 9 have desiccants inside their chamber to reduce the humidity in the chamber. These desiccants may need frequent replacement in a humid environment. Vented ion chambers are not very useful at low dose rates such as a 1 millirankin per hour and below, but they can measure high fields up to many rankins per hour. And last but not least, we want to discuss neutron detectors. Two types of neutron detectors are currently produced by Ludlum measurements. Gas-filled tubes or scintillators, surrounded by some type of moderator material, usually a high-density polyethylene sphere. The most common of these is the REM ball. REM is a unit of measurement, Rankin equivalent man. The particular size of the REM sphere is such that it emulates the human body and how it slows neutrons. Because gamma radiation usually accompanies neutron radiation, a detector that is very insensitive to gamma radiation is preferable for a neutron detector. It is important to be able to quantify each type since they react differently with the body. The gas-filled detector tube contains boron trifluoride at one atmosphere or less of pressure. The incident neutron strikes the sphere and reacts with the hydrogen in the material. This reaction slows the neutron to a level where it will react with the boron trifluoride gas molecules and create alpha particles. These alpha particles can then be detected. This type of detector is very insensitive to gamma radiation. We say this detector has a very good gamma rejection. These spheres come in in a variety of sizes. By using different sizes, data can be taken and analyzed to determine the energy profile of the neutron radiation. The second type of neutron gas filled detector uses helium-3. It operates in much the same way as the boron trifluoride. It is generally more sensitive than the boron trifluoride type, but has less gamma rejection. For more detailed information about radiation detectors, we recommend the text Radiation Detection and Measurement by Dr. Glenn F. Knoll, published by John Wiley & Sons, Incorporated. Ludlow Measurements provides repair and calibration services for these detectors and many more instruments. If you have any questions about products manufactured by Ludlow Measurements, our sales and technical staff are available by telephone to assist you. Need a quote, parts, service, or just have a question? Give us a call at 1-800-661-4591. Stewart Hunt & Associates has offices in Western and Central Canada ready to serve you.